So I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a huge fan of the Matrix films. Hi, I'm T1J. Follow me. Real quick, if you're a subscriber and you want to make sure that you're getting all of my videos, ring the bell below the video and turn on notifications. Do it now. So you know like how people nerd out about Star Wars or Lord of the Rings? That's how I am with the Matrix trilogy. Now it's largely the consensus that the original Matrix film was good to great, while the two sequels were subpar to god awful. But I love both of those movies, unironically. So at first I was just like, people just don't get it. But then again, maybe I'm just a fanboy who at some point became incapable of being being objective. And to be honest, both of those things are probably part of it. But I think there might actually be more to it. Before we unpack that though, I want to talk about why movie sequels in general are often disappointing. Now of course, movie sequels are often forced out as a cash grab to take advantage of the success of the original. Like why are there three hangover movies? Like really? But that can't be the only reason that sequels to good movies so often just aren't as good. This video is actually inspired by a review of the movie Star Wars The Force Awakens that I found on YouTube on this channel One Dodgy Dude. It's a pretty new and small channel, but the videos are pretty awesome so far. I'll leave a link below if you want to check it out. Now, The Force Awakens is a controversial example because lots of people love that movie, but in his review, One Dodgy Dude says that one of the reasons that The Force Awakens is inferior to the original trilogy is because there's nothing at stake for the protagonist. The original Star Wars trilogy was this David versus Goliath story about this ragtag group of heroes that takes down this giant empire against all odds. In The Force Awakens, though, the roles are kind of reversed. The Resistance is big and has the backing of the government. And the heroes are all inexplicably amazing at everything they do from the moment we meet them. Their victory is kind of already a given, so it's harder to be invested in the story. And I noticed that a lot of movie sequels have this same problem. In The Matrix Reloaded, Neo is basically a god. We're pretty much assured that he can't lose a fight, yet they make us watch him fight people over and over again. There's no stakes whatsoever, you know he's not going to lose. This famous fight scene ends because both characters are too strong and they reach a stalemate. A stalemate. Made. Wachowskis, you literally wrote the movie. You could have come up with something. In Die Hard 2, which most people say is inferior to the original, you have kind of the same thing. John McClane is now a hotshot super cop with his life together, rather than some random down on his luck police officer who got caught up in a situation he didn't ask for. And because of that, it doesn't mean as much to the audience when he wins. When you think of movie sequels that most people think are good, the common thread is that they're usually good stories that could stand on their own and don't require you to know anything about the characters. This can be achieved in various ways such as introducing new characters for the audience to root for or by having the same characters but in a situation far removed from the events of the first film. Now clearly some movie sequels are terrible and you can tell they didn't even try. But sometimes they do try and just come up short. And I think this often happens when you try to tell a story about a familiar character that encounters a new adventure. The problem is that usually that character's internal struggle has been resolved in the first movie. So a new story focused around that same character is inherently going to be less interesting. Of course, some movie sequels can pull this off just because they're fucking brilliant, but I digress. Stories with flawed characters who press on despite their weaknesses are great. I mean, that's kind of the point of telling stories, to explore a theme through the lens of your protagonist's character development. But every now and then, and maybe this is just me, I just like to see a story about competent people making good decisions and crushing life. I think there's room for that in fiction, right? See, when the hero completes their path and realizes their potential, the movie usually ends very shortly after that. You don't get to see them at the top of their game for very long. And that's that's where sequels come in. A lot of times the sequels simply exist to give you an opportunity to watch your hero be awesome for a couple of hours. I mean, maybe the plot and character arc isn't as compelling, but that's not the point. The point is the spectacle of watching good guys kicking ass, and there's nothing inherently wrong with the spectacle. How many horror movies do we watch where we know that most of the protagonists have no chance of survival, but we watch anyway just for the spectacle of seeing young, attractive people getting horribly mutilated in hilarious ways? Same concept just in reverse, and that's in large part what the Matrix sequels are. Sure, there's the convoluted pseudo-philosophical lore which fanboys like myself spent years theorizing and debating over on the internet. Actually, making this video inspired me to go back and watch them again. Man, they're they're really cool. I understand why people don't like it, but they're, they're underrated. But the main point of the Matrix sequels is to watch Neo and his buddies fuck shit up. It's to provide lovers of the original movie some good old-fashioned fan service. So we know that movie sequels 
can be amazing, which is probably why we hold them to the same standard as any other movie. But next time you go to watch a sequel, just think about why they exist in the first place. Yeah, to exploit the popularity of the first movie in order to make money, but also to give fans the opportunity to watch those characters that we grew to love being awesome. That's just me though. What do you think? Thank you for watching my video. There are just a couple of days left to order a That's Just Mito t-shirt. You can check them out at teespring.com slash DJMD. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more video discussions about social issues, current events, and pop culture. And if you find any value in my videos, or if you just want to support me, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. And remember, be honest, be assertive, be kind, and be open-minded. Stay hate